And welcome back to another daily devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa, and this devotion is for Friday, April 12th of 2024. We're in the Gospel of Mark. We're in the 15th chapter, so we've been in Mark for a while. Uh, we're almost done with chapter 15, not quite yet today, but close. Uh, today we're looking at verses 33 to 41. Uh, this is the death of Jesus. He's been on the cross. We got him up there. He's been crucified, and today he will expire. So, without further ado, let's look at verses 31, or excuse me, 33 to 41, and then we'll talk about it a bit. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And one ran and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from afar. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Josie and Salome, who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him, and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Okay, a lot of things in this little, little bit of scripture here. Uh, first of all, the very last part, we're going to start at the bottom, work our way up. Um, here we have uh, the women, and not mention, or there's no mention in Mark's gospel of any of the men, Gentile, or the disciples, rather, not Gentiles, disciples being at the foot of the cross. Only the women are there, and that's very unlikely. Um, the women are, you know, it's a patriarchal society. The women are, you know, diminished, but it, Jesus had a particular uh, attraction to the women followers. There's no doubt about that, and he's, they certainly um, show as being important. They're the ones, first ones to go to the tomb and find it empty in all of the scriptures. Um, now the men go and find the tomb empty. Um, and they are the ones that are at the foot of the cross in all four gospels. Uh, only in John's do you have the, the disciple whom he loved, Jesus loved, at the foot of the cross. The rest of them, the men are nowhere to be seen. And some of them are all, and some, I believe in one, it's off at a distance. But it doesn't even say that in Mark. And Mark's the earliest. Remember that. Um, then we have the centurion going from top to bottom. The centurion sees all of this. He witnesses all of this. And he's the first one to say, truly, this man was the son of God. This this Gentile, this this oppressor of the Jewish people is the first one to recognize Jesus as Lord. Um, truly recognize him at that time. The, 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 the apostles have said things, but this is, this is significant. Um, though we do have uh, in in uh, um, Thomas, as probably has the highest uh, proclamation of Jesus as the Messiah prior to that. But anyway, I digress. Um, then backing up to uh, what's going on here, let's see. Oh, the temple. I'm going to talk about the temple curtain. Don't forget the temple curtain, Roy. Um, the temple curtain, that's important too. It's torn from top to bottom. And that, of course, we always want to mention that. It is symbolic of the, prior to the tearing of that curtain to the temple, that's the temple, the, the uh, curtain to the Holy of Holies is what it is. Um, only the high priest and only once a year could go into the Holy of Holies. Nobody else puts that foot in there. The fact that this is open now to everyone, everyone can enter in now. Uh, God is, is available to all, not just the purview of the high priest one time a year. He is always there. He has come into the world, literally. So uh, that is an important uh, symbolic act that we have there. That's always something we always want to look at. Um, okay, then the last thing I want to touch upon here, um, this, this proclamation, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's a very peculiar thing to say Jesus is saying that God's forsaken him when he is God. Um, what's really peculiar here is that Jesus can say anything at all on the, on the cross. Uh, for crying out loud, the whole thing with crucifixion was you died by suffocation because of the way you're up there and your arms outstretched. Uh, you, 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 it puts tension on your, on your chest and on your, on your diaphragm and your breathing is, um, is incredibly difficult, much less speaking. Um, that's why they came and broke the legs of them when they wanted to make sure they expired. 
uh, because they couldn't even use their legs to try to hold themselves up a little bit to catch some breath. Um, and certainly their legs would tire out, and Jesus has been beaten, so he has hardly any strength, physical strength left. Spiritual strength, different story. Physical strength left. So it's a miracle that he's able to say anything, much less to say these things loudly, as it says on both the occasion in, in Mark's gospel where he talks. And we don't know what he breathes with his last. He just utters a loud cry and breathes his last. But anyway, back to this, why have you forsaken me? Um, in order for Jesus to truly be the substitutional sacrifice, he had to be fully human. He had to understand truly what it was to be human. And that would include this feeling that all of us have had from time to time in our life, that God's abandoned us, that God has, that God has, maybe we've done something. Forsaken would mean I've done something to make God leave me, but leave me. But we find ourselves in situations where we very much feel like God's just not there. Um, I'm recording this on April 11th for the 12th, but nonetheless, I still feel that a little bit of the memory of that same feeling because 31 years ago on April 12th, um, 1993, um, we, Gail and I lost our second son, our, our, our son Wyatt died. I uh, was born and died on the same day. Um, and in that moment, uh, uh, certainly of of going through that birth, uh, the, the, of knowing that they wouldn't help him um, when he was born, um, it was a feeling of, of absolute forsakenness, that, that, that there was no God. That, that, that God was, you know, you cry out to God, you pray to God, but what, what did it do for you? Uh, our minister at that time came, came to the hospital and, uh, and in all of that, um, Still, there was that sense that God, God wasn't there for us. Um, very much that feeling as I held his little body in my hands that day, that God had forsaken me. The great irony of that situation is in that situation where I felt so alone from God. Uh, and at that point, Gail was in surgery because they had to take her in for a DNC. And I'm left there with this, in a room alone with this little tiny corpse. Um was my son. Um, I felt that feeling of forsakenness. I also suddenly had that realization that I needed to get closer to God, that I needed to do what I needed to do so that I could see my son again someday, that I wanted to live the rest of my life ready to go to see him, to be with him. That's the goal and has been my goal since that day. Um, so it's very much that day um, so many years ago uh, if you watch this on the 12th, that's so many days ago on that day, um, that was the beginning of my, my, my journey to ministry. Uh, without that day, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> apologize, there's no way that I would have ever gotten into the ministry. I would have done, remained doing whatever it was else that I would be doing. Um, so out of the ashes, the phoenix will rise. That's the point. God brings good out of all circumstances, even the most devastating and horrific and heartbreaking things. And April 12th is a terrible day for us. It's a very difficult day, especially for Gail. Um, and this year has been kind of a bad year. She's already, usually two or three days or more or more before the day comes, she starts having problems. And it's been a, it's been a bad week uh, for her. Um, and, it, you know, and that affects me, of course, as well. But we have to always remember that that it's a, uh, out of all of that tragedy, something good comes. Um, and that's a difficult thing. But the bottom line is, is that without that forsakenness, Jesus couldn't empathize with, empathize with us, have empathy for us, can't talk. In those dark days, those difficult moments, he can understand and his shoulders can bear when we cry out, why have you forsaken me? It doesn't hurt God's feelings when we feel that way, because God still loves us even in those dark days, even in those difficult, incredibly difficult, heartbreaking moments. That's what I got for you today. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll deal with the burial of Jesus. Have a blessed day. Be a blessing to someone today. If you enjoy these devotions, please like and subscribe. Come on back again. We'd love to have you back again. Well, that's the most important thing of all. Take care. God bless. God loves you.